All right, so today I'm out here in the uh, garden. I figured I'd bring you all along to show you what I'm doing. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a, a soil test. So uh, a lot of times you'll hear me or maybe a lot of other videos you've watched say, you need to add this or add that or put this in your soil to make this grow better. But how do you really know if you need these items in your garden? The only way to know is if you do an actual soil test. Um, I've done one many years ago, uh, back when my older videos, you probably can see if I can find that for y'all to watch. But um, in our area, it's very common to um, knowledge to know that here in North Texas, uh, the nitrogen I'm back, coming back from the soil test to be probably near zero for nitrogen, but there's other uh, results that will be um, available on a soil test. So I'm gonna get out here and test uh, four, four different areas. I got our backyard, front yard, uh, lawn, and my two different uh, vegetable gardening beds that I'm gonna also do a soil test on. So I'm curious to see the difference between the two vegetable garden beds and our backyard and front yard soil test. So let me show you how we're going to do this uh, soil test. All right, so this is a, a soil probe. You could use a trowel or a shovel to get in there and get some samples of your soil. But this I find is going to be a little bit easier for us to do. You want to sample, you know, several different areas and just one, uh, one area. I've marked on here, as you can see, uh, two different depths, six inches and nine inches. Um, you want to sample at the root level, wherever you're uh, sampling. For example, our lawn, we, the lawn grass does not go that deep. But here um, in the garden, some of the herbs and vegetables grow a little deeper than that for the roots. So I've got this uh, soil probe. You could use a shovel if you wanted to, but we got to uh, get a nice variety of sampling in multiple spots of wherever you're going to sample. Um, and I'm going to send this off to the A&M Extension Service here in Texas. They got a soil sampling um, that I've used before and it recommends uh, two to three cups of soil samples per um, area that you're sampling. So let me show you how this works. So all I do is insert this in, give a little twist, pull it out, and there is our sample that I will add to a Ziploc bag and send out. So I'm going to do several samplings of different spots in our garden bed so we get a nice uh, even balance of testing and that's all you have to do So as I do these uh, soil samples, I'm finding that my clay soil gets clogged up here. So then the uh, soil does not keep pushing all the way up. As you can see here, it stopped. And I pushed this all the way down, but I didn't get a soil sample pushed all the way up. This is because of the clay. It's clogged up here. I mean, this is hard as a rock. So. Let me show you what I do to prevent this from happening and get a better soil sample. So I did some research and some people recommended do a, uh, some oil or WD-40. I don't really want to use a chemical like a WD-40. So I got some uh, spray, oil spray here. And I found this works much better. And the clay soil will not stick. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So I, I try to move some of the mulch out of the way. Get to the soil. 
punch it down and it goes very much easily through the soil. And as you can see, I got a nice soil sample here. You can see how it, it cut through the soil versus before, I don't think it was doing as well. So if you got clay soil like I have, you may need to uh, spray it a little bit. They also have some tools that'll push it out some, but you need something that'll make it glide through so you get a nice cut through this soil. So I used a little uh, oil spray to get a even consistent soil sample, as you can see here. All right, so here's the uh, paperwork you have to uh, you fill out from the uh, extension that I'm using. Um, so a couple of key things you're going to need to know is your square feet, how much uh, square foot you have. For example, my front yard, how many square feet the backyard, last time you fertilized and with what. And then you select, uh, you know, what you're trying to grow. You know, you can test for all kinds of things. And then they have several different um, soil analysis tests you can choose from. Um, I am going to go with the uh, number two. That's going to give me a data on my iron because I think I'm low on iron in my uh, front yard. I want to see what that comes back at. But um, so there's just a, how you uh, would fill out the uh, form to get your soil tested. And then you just put your soil in your bag, two to three cups, label it so it matches what you've put on the paper. And they've even give you some instructions here. Um, like I was saying, two to three cups of soil. If your soil is really wet, you wanna uh, let it air dry. Do not like heat it up, just let it air dry out. You don't want to be sitting in mud. Um, and then as you can see there, it says about six inches deep. And as they recommend eight to 10 times throughout the different area that you're sampling. So there's just the uh, form to fill out to get your soil tested. All right, so we got all of our soil samples taken. You can see it takes a nice uh, sample depth. So we got a nice consistent depth versus uh, digging with a shovel. Here's the uh, lawn samples. You can see our soil is very, very much uh, clay. So I'm gonna send this out and uh, next up after that, I'll share, share my uh, results with you and see uh, what comes back. All right, so we got our uh, test results back. They emailed me them. I printed them out here. Uh, our soil test, we did uh, two different garden areas and the front and backyard. So first, let me remind you what I what test I did run. Here is the, um, for the, uh, I did number two for the front yard and backyard lawn. And I did number three, the, the test is boron because it's, um, it's gonna show the uh, amount of decomposing organic matter, especially um, since we apply compost and manures, as it says. Um, that will show us on there about our organic matter in the vegetable garden. So let's go ahead and check out the results. This is the um, first bed here along our driveway. They labeled the uh, sample like I labeled the bag. And as you can see, it shows the pH here. Um, as expected, the uh, nitrogen is very low. And as you come over this way, you can see that uh, they recommend recommended rate to uh, add your fertilizer to get it up to where it needs to be. And then everything else as expected is um, pretty good or over the um, recommended limit as you can see here. So next we come down to the next bed garden area I had. This one here, once again, this is one with our a lot of our herbs bed in it. A few veggies, uh, once again, nitrogen near zero. And it, it'll tell you uh, the recommended rate down here on the bottom. It, you know, it tells you how much to do every four to six weeks. But 
the, then if you look at the boron, right, the boron was uh, for the organic matter test. We pay a little more for, as you can see here. This is the um, critical level line here where that little dash is, the CL. At what, uh, at, that's the point where they recommend no more nutrients be added. So we're pretty close on the organic matter. It's not very low and it's not too much. So this is in the, uh, this is our driveway garden bed. And then our backyard bed that I built, the boron here is a little bit higher, organic matter, um, past the critical limit as they call it. So that was kind of interesting to see the difference. So there's just a little bit difference in both beds. This, this driveway bed here is the one where um, I amended it several years ago when we moved in very uh, heavily with compost or manures, but it's been a few years since I did anything. And this bed was the raised bed that we built and added soil to and raised it in. So that's why I was curious to see the difference between the two. And as you can see, they're pretty close to the same. Now, if we come over here to our lawn, growing St. Augustine grass, you can see once again, the uh, nitrogen is a little low. I fertilized it about a month ago, so there's a little bit there, which is good to see. Um, and then once again, they show the amount of nitrogen we should be adding to get where we need to be. And here is the backyard. Now this is the front yard here. And once again, I did fertilize not maybe a month ago here. So nitrogen. The interesting thing here in the front yard is this phosphorus is also a little bit on the low side. So I found that a little interesting. Um, usually everything is past the uh, recommended rate compared to the backyard, it just recommends the uh, nitrogen. So uh, front yard, we need to add a little phosphorus too. And then you can see as well, the recommended application amount. And I give you little tips here on the bottom, applying the uh, pound of nitrogen per thousand square foot. So, there is just a little bit of our soil test that we got back. Um, hopefully that makes sense. As you can see here, when you get these back, you can see what you have and what you don't have. And we don't need to add calcium. You know, some people add eggshells to the, their uh, plants. No, we don't need that here. Um, sulfur, I see a lot of people adding sulfur sometimes. Um, iron, you can buy iron, you know different things people add in their gardens um, that is not needed. And the only way to really know that is if you do a uh, soil test. So all we need to do is add a all nitrogen only fertilizer and we should have a very successful uh, vegetable garden and lawn. So hopefully this makes sense, get you some test soil tests done and uh, have a great vegetable garden. So make it a great day.